for months, please. As you already told, I'm going to talk a little bit on Nomad. I'm Ant Mutlevich, I work at Ordina, a big uh, chain company in the Netherlands. And you can find me on Twitter, GitHub, and email. What is Nomad? Nomad is a distributed, opti <coughs> optimistically concurrent scheduler, which means um, with optimistically concurrent at least, it will schedule or try to schedule without making any logs, preventing from creating dead logs, which will create a little bit of hassle when scheduling. Now, what is a scheduler? In short, a scheduler maps a set of work to a set of resources. And someone is late. Yeah. We're all waiting for you. So, where's your ticket? Schedulers are all around us. If everyone has a laptop, you are running probably multiple schedulers. Probably the most basic one is the CPU scheduler, which schedules some press to physical cores. And if you are using AWS or any other cloud platform, also schedulers will be used. Um, why do you want to use a scheduler? Mostly for stuff like bin packing, which is placing multiple workloads on the system so you can get more utilization of your system. I doubt any of you, the machines you have running, will have a high CPU utilization. Anyone who comes above 80%? Yeah. Not too many. <laughs> Yeah. Oversubscription and job queuing. Job queuing is just making a load set of work ready in advance for machines to run when resources come available. Scheduling. With Nomad, you decide what to run, and Nomad will uh, decide how to run and where. But you can force Nomad's hand with using constraints. In a couple of sheets, I will show you how. Um, Nomad can not only schedule Docker containers, but also Rocket, Java application SDRs, uh, isolate XX in a chain root environment, raw XX with X to the complete host, and QEMU VMs if you want a really contained workload. Uh, there are three different types of jobs in Nomad. Um, service will probably be the most used. Uh, this is, are not only short lasting things, as most mainframers will think about jobs, they think about short running items. <coughs> service is long lasting item, by example your web application. A batch is just like any other batch job. An assistant job will run on every um, server which um, still is available after the constraints. Um, a job file in Nomad. Um, a job is normally entered into Nomad with a job file. And a job file in very easy mode looks like this. You have a main job, but if you get a JSON output of the HTTP API, a uh, job is forgotten, so it won't work. Maybe HashiCorp can fix this in the later release. <laughs> um, you have set a group name, but if you only have a single task in your group, you don't have to um, specify the group and the task. A task is really the workout itself. You specify the kind of driver, which are the kind of workloads as I showed before, and which resources the job needs. In basic, a job file looks like this. This will run if you just use this. Um, you specify the data center in which you run. Nomad is uh, built up for to run in multiple data centers. And in this case you have a task called Redis, which is using the driver Docker with the image Redis latest. And you will use a port map uh, version, a port map port 26379, which is the default port. Otherwise, you would be able to run only once the container on your system. 
and the resource, I will talk a little bit about it later. Um, constraints. As I was told before, with uh, constraints you can force Nomad's hand to where Nomad will run the workloads. In this case you will see a um, constraint so that the workload will only run on a system called running Linux. can be quite useful when running Docker at this moment. Um, other um, attributes you can use are hostname. If you really want to do this, I sincerely doubt you want to. Um, the kernel version, if you only want to run an application on the very modern OS, you use this. Or, by example, the instance type, so you don't run the CF server on your AWS uh, Nano. Uh, anyone familiar, not familiar with service discovery with console? No? Okay. It's easy. Um, They're lying. <laughs> Explain it anyway. Yeah, um, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, console service discovery is um, Nomad will tell the console what the service is running and where it's running. And with their API, you can retrieve that information so your application can talk to the other application without knowing where it's running in advance. Um, you specify in, in the job file um, the name of the service, it can be useful, and on which port it is running, and console will do the rest. You can also use um, the console checks. In this case, you will see a simple TCP check. It will just connect to the specified port and say, hey, is there? Okay. And the other one is an HTTP check. So it only will say it's okay after 200 series response. Uh, in short, service discovery again. Uh, container provides service. The container uh, runs service on an unknown port because it's port mapped to a quite random port. And with a tool like console template, you can retrieve the info and create a config file for, in this case, Nginx. And it will be a load balancer for the different containers. Um, the idea, like, well, just restart the containers. Yeah! No! No! No, just don't, okay, this is like the modern incarnation of just reboot your, your PC. No, don't just reboot your PC, goddammit, debug it. Come on, you're an educated person, right? Or at least you want to act like one around other educated people. Um, you can automatically uh, configure how uh, jobs are restarted. Um, in this case, the uh, container will be restarted in, uh, Interval 5 minutes, 10 times, with a um, delay of 25 seconds between uh, attempts. Since 0 0.3, uh, you need to specify the mode is delay, otherwise it won't work. For uh, best jobs, you have slightly different um, defaults, so make sure you check them before trying to run. Uh, scaling. Everyone then is using scaling with Docker Compose. It works the same. Just increase the amount okay. and resubmit the job file and it will scale up. Decrease the amount, submit the job, and the amount of instances will go down. For updates, as we'll show you later, um, it will not update every container at the same time, unless you want to. <laughs> but it will take time to um, update containers after each other. Jobs, uh, in a periodic way for batch jobs, you can configure this in a cron like system and tell Nomad if it needs to be preventing overlapping or not. For a local development environment, you don't have to run a complete <coughs> Nomad cluster. You can run a single instance with Nomad agent minus dev, and it will only run on your local machine. Don't do this for production, because if it goes down, all data is gone, and no jobs are rescheduled again when you start it up. 
and if running on a local machine with a Docker host on the same machine, it will fingerprint your, uh, your Mac or your Windows PC instead of the Docker host. So the amount of memory and CPU will be slightly different. Resources. I already said from you schedule a certain amount of resource with your uh, workload. In this case, uh, CPU is based on CPU shares. They are not uh, used until the machines under load. So if all other systems, all jobs are doing nothing, and only one needs low CPU power, it can use all the CPU available. But when the system is under load, it will share the CPU as configured. Memory is really based on virtual uh, memory available, so no swapping. But it will fingerprint the fully amount. So if you're running some other items on the operating system, it doesn't uh, take this into account. And if you doesn't specify enough memory, it will crash your application as it cannot allocate any memory. So this, make sure you allocate enough memory. For this space, um, keep in mind that also the amount this space of your logging is required, which I in the first time didn't use, so it wouldn't start. IO for a network doesn't work at this moment, but maybe in a future release it will. A Nomad installation in the cluster is quite easy. To install the Nomad instances on servers, um, you join them into a cluster and just install the clients on your Docker host and connect them to the service and you can start running workloads with Nomad. <coughs> um, HashiCorp doesn't uh, release any official roadmap, so I decided to uh, <coughs> file the list. <laughs> yeah. So, any questions about this? Don't ask them to me, but there's some other guys who can answer them. Um, I already said in 0.3, which is the current version, that I will support in 0.4 persistent volumes, multiple network cards, and enhancement to logging system. And ACLs, which is mentioned in a GitHub issue, should also be in 0.4. They mentioned um, also that 0.4 will be um, the version will be focusing on enterprise uh, features. So let's hope it will be ready for big enterprises after this. Um, but there is something I really don't like about Nomad. They decided to only release the UI to Atlas, That's which is good. the paid. Hmm? Very good. Who needs UI? Yeah, who needs UI? <laughs> if you want to have it in a big bank, you probably need a UI. Uh, they, all banks. We have, if you're running a couple then of they have money for the UI, hmm? then they have money for Atlas anyway. Yeah. I don't think you want Atlas for an application which is running on premise. Because Atlas is? Um, it can also be on premise. Hmm? It can also be on premise. Okay, that's the uh, genius. <laughs> yes? Awesome. Yeah. Um, but, and they decided to not open source the UI which they will build into Atlas. But I think someone else can probably do it within a couple of weeks if they have enough uh, REST interface experience. Um, the demo I will give in a short moment, I've used this setup. I will push some code to GitLab. Jenkins will build a new image and push it to my Nomad cluster running on AWS. And the Docker container will be updated in instance by instance. So you will see in the list of responses that show slowly will be updated. And in my current demo setup, I only use one Docker host, so not really a cluster, but who cares. <laughs> Can anyone read it? No, no. <laughs> it's currently just um, requesting every uh, half a second for a new uh, version. Uh, 
kom så plus. But sometimes with demo, uh, Jenkins doesn't decide to work for some reason. So, so it builds. Yeah. What you will see now, it's building the new version of the container, which is not very different from the old one, and it will push it to AWS. And in periods, it will update instance by instance. As you can see now. One container is ready updated to 1.4, so 1.3, and every 15 or so seconds we will update the next container, which would be around now. And as you can see, without any downtime, I am updating the web application. Cool. In Jenkins, the I sub really submit a new uh, job file, in this case a uh, JSON based to Nomad using the HC5 API. So yeah. it probably sh looks very uh, similar to a uh, normal job file. Mm. That's it. So, not that one. Any questions? Difficult I will share to someone else. Uh, you, you talked about oversubscripting. Yeah. Can you have jobs with more priority than others and then yeah. and then that they were killed or uh they will make a place for more priority jobs. So are, are they just killed or do they don't get did they starve? They have no CPU? Um, they will affect from the machine. Okay. And memory, how about memory? Uh, memory, can you overcommit memory and what no. happens? Only just the amount of virtual memory available. No swapping. Now I understand that, but uh, if a machine wants more because it has higher priority, can you then? No, if uh, there's no room for, an, for a job and all they have the same uh, priority, it doesn't fit, it, so it can't schedule. Okay, but if you don't have the same priority, then? The most important will get um, okay. scheduled. How does uh, how does it handle volumes? Currently, not. Oh, let's go. <laughs> but it should be in zero point four. <laughs> should be. Oh, yeah. No, no official roadmap. It's not a contract, as far as I know. It should be. It should be. Yeah. It will be. It will be. Will be. Okay. And, and how will it run? Will it use servers and clients? Will it use yeah. like we will uh, run a couple of Nomad servers, uh, like three to five for a data center. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. on the uh, Docker host, you run an agent, which actually is the same binary, yeah. but they are configured differently. Okay, you have to oh, oh, connect them to the servers. Yeah. yeah. But you have to do it manually. Um, or can you uh, leverage uh, something like uh, In your configuration, you can say connect to the uh, nomad.service.dc1.console, but you can specify in configuration to what service it should connect. Okay, it doesn't have a discover service running your. No, because otherwise, how does it find the console? You need to bootstrap it somehow. Yeah. Same so with console, you need to bootstrap it somehow. So, uh, so you need to get the information. Yeah. You do need to give it some information. Okay. In the setup I built, I use a console for DNS, so Nomad can find the Nomad service through DNS. Okay. Because uh, when you, for instance, install uh, Elasticsearch, 
the nodes will auto discover them themselves in the in the subnet. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Yeah. Anti affinity, is that possible? Not sure. Not sure. Maybe you should ask them. But yeah, there is a, a distinct host option. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Distinct? Uh, I think it's just, just uh, like a Boolean right now. So it just yeah. spreads across. If you uh, give it a predefined port without port mapping, it can only run one instance on the machine, by example. Okay. So I can only run one Nginx load balancer on Docker host. On port eighty. There's only one port eighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And bare metal? How does it work with bare metal? Does it work with bare metal? Yeah. yeah. Why should it? Yeah, I'm just asking. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. You can run an agent. You can run the agent. Um, and did you test like other tools like uh, Rancher or something? And how does it compare with those? Yeah. Um, I've not had enough time to check them all. I'm uh, doing a little bit of Kubernetes, but not enough. So I can't really say on every other system. I can tell you that the Rancher is much more advanced in, as an orchestration system. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the scheduler for uh, Nomad is uh, more sophisticated. But it's, it's much earlier. So yeah. Rancher is doing a lot of very fascinating stuff as an integrated tool and with the Hashcorp tool set, you can glue them together to get, you know, there's very good cool tools, but you have to build an orchestration system basically yourself. Yeah, Rancher has a new life. Yeah, Rancher has a new life. One of the big advantages of Nomad, I think, is it's very easy to set up. You don't have uh, 10 servers or 10 different services needed to run it. Just Nomad's binary is enough. Yeah. And it's a configuration for the branch is also pretty simple to set up. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Want to ask more to you later. <laughs> Anyone else? Have you ever tried to uh, to do to use it without Docker actually? Uh, no. With the uh, exit or whatever. No. 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 Ah, you should. Ah. <laughs> I know I know I know at Chibia they uh, run an um, monitoring agent, uh Cystic. And they did to run, needed to run with a local exec because the Docker drive didn't have enough permissions. Okay. And what happens if you uh, start a job and the uh, dependency is not available? Can you just does it say no? Can it just wait for the for it to become available? It will not queue unless it can schedule the load to the system. Okay. If there's nothing available, it can't schedule. Yeah, but then it, it doesn't, does it retry or does it... Uh... No, it will give a message from failure. So you have to, you have to program yourself the, the order in which you start your services? Uh, if you schedule them, it will keep the search running. But if it all needs to start up again, yeah. If you start from scratch, you have to answer them in sequence. Okay. Hmm. But, but you can schedule or uh, put more than one task in the job file. Yes. So you can set if you have combined set of services, you can schedule them together, and you can create a dependencies between them. Ah. Okay. Get it. Thank you. But your services loop are loosely coupled, right? So they should fill if another one fills. But if they're not scheduled, because the, then then they will never come up. It should uh, fill uh, racial loop. It should give an, uh, an error, I'm not able to do my work, but it shouldn't be. No, I understand, but if it's never scheduled because the dependency is not there, then it will never start. Uh, because you cannot say from, you need dependencies on the schedulers. You cannot say from, only run this if this service is available. It will start, you can't specify this. Yeah, okay. Huge thunderous round of applause.